sure I can't persuade you to come with us to the Contiki. No, really. I have to get up early in the morning. Well, then, I hope I see you again soon. Good night. Night. Don't forget my name now, will you? Barton. Dave Barton. Office address, Hochstad 21. Don't worry. I'll remember. Good night, Julie. Bye. Miss Harrison? Yes. You called me, didn't you, Miss Harrison? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> yes, Margaret. I wanted to have a look at those last translations that I made. Oh, they're on my desk. I'll bring them in. on the line from London. London? My sister. Well, put her on. Hello. Yes, it's me. How are you? What? I think it's better that you call me at home. The number is 8971. Well, of course I'll wait for your call. All right. Mary? Mary? Hello? Hello? Was your call completed? I didn't yes. know you had it. Yes, thank you. I got the call. That's all for tonight. All right. See you in the morning. Goodbye. Yes. Hello? New in stock. Beautiful, yes? <laughs> the mask is Paraguayan. A Gawker army knife. You see? I great authority on horror stories. What you are is a real idiot. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I did not... Oh.
hours I'll stand, Mr. Barton. It was a bad day. Everybody was nervous in court. The Baroness Van Nugent's called from Brussels. Mm. Something wrong with Choo Choo again. They didn't accept him for the finals of the dog show and she wants to sue. <laughs> and Mr. Bayard wants to have a word with you. The Sander case? He'll win that hands down. What else? Uh, Mr. Cedar's party is scheduled for the day after tomorrow at Congress Hall. Oops, I'll have to be careful. Discussing imports? Oh, calories. I put on some weight. <laughs> Who's in there? Uh, Mr. Shane. He says that he's a friend of yours. They're all friends when they want something. <laughs> Tony. Dave. How you doing? Fine. Want a drink? Thanks, whiskey. I qualified for the race, so I thought I'd come by and celebrate. I don't have to practice today. How's it been going for you? The usual, Tony, you know. <laughs> When's the race? Tomorrow afternoon. Cheers. Yes, Kitty? Uh, Miss Harrison's here. Who? Miss Julie Harrison. Sure in. Do you mind? No, of course uh, not. Thank you. Miss Harrison. Hello. I didn't think I would have the pleasure of seeing you again so soon. Please sit down. What's the matter? You seem troubled. I am, Mr. Barton. I wouldn't bother you, but I'm terribly concerned. Recently, I've had some very unnerving experiences. I know it sounds silly, but it's as if someone's spying on me. Do you know who? No, I don't. Today, I'm at my wit's end. I received a phone call from Mary. She said that... Just a minute. Who's Mary? Oh, Mary's my sister. She called me from London Airport. She said that she'd been threatened, that her life is in danger. If she's been threatened, why are they spying on me? You've no idea who. Tony, come on in. Pretty lady. She kill her husband? Hmm. That's a professional secret. Huh. Well, whatever it is, right now she's in trouble. Let go. Let go of me. Get her in the car. Oh. 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 You all right? Yes, thank you. Some friends you have. You don't need a lawyer, you need a bodyguard. Oh, I just don't understand. When I think of what could have happened, if it weren't for you, I'd be in very unpleasant company at the moment. You can say that again. It was a pleasure, I assure you. Uh, my name is Tony Shane, and saving beautiful women is my hobby. <laughs> How will I ever thank you two? Like right? I said, it was a pleasure. You haven't changed, have you? Coffee's ready. How much sugar? Two for me. Very little. You know, this house is pretty isolated, especially if you live alone here. If you have no objections, we can talk in front of Tony. He's an old friend. Well, Mary and I are twins, and I mean identical twins, but just physically. That's as far as the resemblance goes. We uh, never got along very well, and... What's the matter? Maybe you didn't close a window properly. Oh, yes. It's probably a window. What was I saying? That you didn't get along very well. I didn't get along very well. You and your sister? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, 
I was always having to take the blame for things that Mary had done. I see. Did you keep in touch with her? No, I heard that she'd come to Europe, but I didn't know where until I got her phone call this morning. She said that she was in a terrible mess, that her life was in danger. Didn't she say anything else? She kept repeating, my husband, my husband. Her husband, if she's in trouble. Sounds like he might be causing it. Do you know him? No, I don't. Cigarette? Gretel, the nurse who raised Mary and me, told me that their marriage was a failure. I think they're divorced. Listen, Julie, maybe Gretel knows more about it. Do you know where she is? Hmm, not at the moment. I still think it's strange your sister won't call the police. Yes, it is. Well, if she phones you again, ask her to call me. Maybe she'll talk to me and I can advise her. It's worth a try. Sure, I agree. But what's Julie going to do for now? Stay here? It's obvious these guys took her for a sister. And that means there's a pretty good chance they'll make the same mistake again. Next time, she may not be so lucky. Here. Which one is me? Here, let me have a look. <laughs> Except the one's a brunette. There's no difference at all. Just the hair. Well, there is a slight difference in the nose. Is there anybody else here? No, the maid leaves at five. You sure she's gone? Yes. Go on talking as if nothing's happened. The nose, huh? I don't see any difference in this picture. She's a devil. She loved to get a rise out of Gretel. Often we used to swap wigs, and she'd do something hey. bad and... Looks like you've had a visitor. Come and see. Why don't you spend the night at a hotel? For your own protection, at least do that. If you want, Julie, I'll take you to one. No, I can't. This is the phone number I gave Mary. Here we are. I don't like leaving her alone, Tony. Don't worry. If she does what we told her to do, keeps the door locked and the phone right next to her, she'll be okay. She can take care of herself. I'm glad you gave her your phone number, too. Well, I've got to admit, I'm curious about this woman. She's my type. Yeah. You know, she isn't just another woman. Tell you the truth, she's my type as well. Ah, but she's a client. Now, why didn't you keep that a professional secret, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Night. Good night, Tom.
because I'm practicing. I'll tell you what, Judy. You deserve a free afternoon. Meet me here in half an hour. Oh, I can't possibly. I have to finish these translations. They're urgent. <laughs> Listen, Julie. I don't think those translations are nearly so important as the moral support a beautiful girl will give me. Oh, all right. You will come down, then. I'll do the best I can. Bye-bye. Good. See you when you get here. Margaret? Yes? If Dave Barton calls, tell him there aren't any problems. I'll be in touch with him later. All right, Miss Harrison. How fast? About 180. 180? That's ridiculous. Nothing goes that fast. <laughs> That's not true. A Formula One car will do over 200 because they have a special body design. Otherwise, they'd take off. Have you watched motor racing before? Hmm. Once or twice. I like it. Good. I have some time off now, so I'll show you around a little. By the way, I'm glad you could make it. We drivers need all the support we can get. We're really very insecure. <laughs> Chevrolet is running three seconds behind you. That's my position on the grid. Better. Oh, oh. No, <laughs> Pretty good time, too. Oh, this is so wonderful. Now I can't well, wait to see you. You've got well over an hour to wait for that. Okay. i got to check my car. Okay. What'll it come to? Yeah. Oh. Good. Come on. I'd like to see Miss Harrison. She's not here. May I help you? Probably. Though, unfortunately, all pretty girls already have a boyfriend. We're not permitted to flirt on company time. Those are the office regulations. May I take a message? No, it's not important. I just wanted to know if she would say yes to having dinner with me tonight. I can leave a note, though she won't be back this afternoon. Why don't we lunch together? Let's see now. It's Wednesday. My boyfriend won't be coming to pick me up today. In that case, I've got an idea. Yes? I'm more angry than hungry. Why? Because of my boyfriend, the one who couldn't pick me up today. You know what he says? If you're not going to go out with me, then I don't want you to go out with anybody. He plays jealous. Then he does what he wants. What does he take me for, anyway? 
All men are healed, Margaret. Oh, yes, you're right. Take you, for example, you're one. You invite me to lunch. And then all we do is talk about Miss Harrison. She's just a client. Hmm. Okay. From now on, we'll talk only about you and me, okay? This where you're supposed to invite me in for a whiskey? No. What about all this woman's lib movement I've been hearing so much about? I hope you won't refuse me a kiss, at least. What's the matter? He's come back. I think it's about time I met this strange visitor of yours. No, Tony, don't go. It's too dangerous. I should have listened to Dave and called the police. It's too late for the police. I need the key for the back door. Mm -hmm. You got it? Give it to me, then. He's not going to expect me, so he won't have a chance. Look as they've mislaid your keys. That'll give me time to get inside. All right? Okay. Just stay put. Uh, and you, no. get over that couch. No. No. Uh, and no screaming. If you want to stay alive, that is. Just tell us where you hid it. Like a good girl. I have some money. In the desk, there's some valuables. Uh, you can quit the bluffing. You know what we're talking about. Please, I don't understand. I don't know what you want. Rip her clothes off, Hank. Let's see what she looks like. <laughs> That's a good idea. You know what I'd like to do? Be a pleasure to cut that pretty face of yours. I wouldn't know whether you're screaming from pain or passion. <laughs> now, where is it? <laughs> You want to tell me where it is, nice and easy, or you want to tell it the hard way? Keep still. Quit stalling. Where is it? Or did you give it to your lawyer friend? Huh? Tell me. Rip her clothes. <laughs> Shut up, you idiot. All right, come on. I'm going to count up to five. Hey, Hank, oh, look at this, will you? What is it, huh? What's this, a Fawdale act? It's my twin sister. Go and see if it's theirs. It looks as if they're still up. Julie Harrison. So where's Mary? Damn it, where I is know, she? I swear I don't know anything. Please let me go. Come on. 
Hold it! Hold it! some pretty tough people. You know, if you hadn't hit that cop, then the sensible thing would be to call in the police. And you better be careful, Tony, or they'll be after you. I thought about that, yeah. I'm sorry I got you involved. Now don't worry yourself about me. I'm not afraid of trouble. The main target is you. For now, I have to take you back. The police will be there, and it's better if you answer some of their questions. Is there no other way? Now, don't worry. Nobody saw you coming out. We'll say we had dinner together that we were together for the whole evening. They don't have any reason to doubt it, so they probably won't question my word. At least not at the moment. And you, Tony, you better put your car in the garage for a week or so. Who are you? The lady lives here. All right, so go ahead. Mr. Barton. How are you, Inspector? How do you do? This is Miss Julie Harrison. She lives here. How do you do? Please. What happened, Inspector? Unexpected guests. Unexpected and criminal. Because one of my men has, has been killed. Would you check around to see if anything is... Uh... Oh, here. As you can see, it's quite a mess. The men who broke in have turned the whole place upside down. There are quite a few valuables still lying around. So it's obvious they weren't common burglars. One doesn't kill a policeman for nothing. What are you insinuating? Mr. Barton, is Miss Harrison... Uh client of yours, or a friend. She's a friend. But if you continue like this, I'll have to make her a client. Inspector, I'm terribly sorry about the police officer. Unfortunately, that, that's part of our, our job, Miss Harrison. When were you last in the United States? Why do you ask? Well, as far as I can tell, there's nothing missing, Inspector. To be or not to be, that is the question. Always liked Hamlet. So you think that the job was done during lunch? Couldn't have been at any other time. I came back at 2.30 and... Yes, first Miss Harrison and then you. Coincidence? Do I follow you correctly? In other words, you think Miss Harrison gave me something that might interest these strange burglars, right? Let's say I think it's a possibility. Yes, Dave. That's right. Tony found a house. What? Yes, I noticed him too, but I didn't think he was a policeman. Oh, uh, yeah, they're telling me too. No, there's nothing to worry about. Maybe Inspector Wrinkle wants to make sure that nothing's going to happen to us. It's his job to protect us taxpayers.
That's right, Selden. Don't come here, but call me the moment you get back from London. Make sure you're not followed. Hmm. All right. Now, don't forget the nurse. Mm. I'm going to need cash to operate on. Before you leave, go and see Geddes. She'll give you some expense mm. money. Right. Hello. Yes, I'm being careful. Where have you been? Why haven't I seen you? Well, I'm just a phone call away. So you've decided to move. Yes, Dave. That's right. Tony found a house. Inspector Wrinkle wants to make sure nothing's going to happen to us. Whatever makes you think that? It's his job to protect us taxpayers. Yes, that's me, 30 years ago. One should never get old, though I mustn't complain. I hope you'll be comfortable, my dear. I'm very happy to have found someone as nice as you to take the flat. <coughs> Thank you. And Mr. Shane here. I find him such a nice man. The old grandfather clock here doesn't work. It's even older than me. But if you want, I can have it fixed. Oh, no. Please don't bother, Mrs. Horst. It really isn't necessary. I have a wristwatch and an alarm clock. As you wish. I must be going, my dear. You'll have the house to yourself. I'm going away for a few days to see my brother in Rotterdam. The train leaves in an hour. I'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good journey. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll help you take your things to your new bedroom. <laughs> Maybe I better do it myself. But we'll have to celebrate, Julie. Let me take you to dinner. No, I'm sorry, but not tonight. I'm tired and I have to unpack. Oh, you can't win them all. I'll take them in anyway. Come on now, baby. What did I do right? You're just like all the rest. I tried to explain. Miss Harrison is in trouble. Now, naturally, it's not her fault. But I have to know everything possible about her to be able to protect her. What about your promise to take me out to dinner? Well, you're right, and I'm sorry about that. Unfortunately, I forgot that tonight is the night your boyfriend doesn't come to pick you up, and I made another appointment. Another woman? No, no, it's nothing like that. Just a client. Mm. Oh, well. How about tomorrow night? What do you want me to tell you? Everything you know. Well, there isn't very much. But she did just ask for a week's holiday. Go on. She assigned her work today. And she got a telephone call from London. I think it was her sister again. At least it sounded like her voice. What did Miss Harrison say? She gave her a phone number. Did it start with 43? Yes, that's the one. Good girl. You really deserve dinner, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night, of course. Mm. Oh, go on now. Go on. Give me a kiss. Hello. 
I can't hear you. Who is it? Who is it? Is that you, Mrs. Horst? Mrs. Horst! Horse. Oh, Mrs. Horst. What are you talking about? Up in the garret. I, I saw her. She's dead. Oh. Mrs. Horst? It must have been your imagination, Julie. No, I saw her body. Oh, strange things are happening in this house. At first, I, I thought I heard a walking stick. So I, I went upstairs. There she was. Oh, it was horrible. We better check. Let's go up and see. Oh, no. No. You go. I'll stay here. All right.
Julie? She's dead, right? There's nobody there, Julie. But how... how is that possible? I'd say your nerves are playing tricks on you. I'm getting you out of here. It's lucky I'm forgetting things these days. I only came back to pick up my briefcase. This way, sir. This is Mr. Hunter. Morning, Mr. Barton. Please sit down. Uh, Steve Hunter is the name. From the Investigation Department of Allied Insurance. Here are my credentials. What can I do for you? Hmm. You know about this? Yes, I read about that a few months ago. It was stolen from the Maharaja Baroda while he was, let's say, absorbed in an intimate conversation. If you know what I mean. I see. But I don't deal in jewels, Mr. Hunter. I realize that, Mr. Barton, but let me explain, please. A month ago, my company paid out one million dollars in cash. But we haven't yet given up hope of getting that diamond back. What is it? The call you were waiting for. Sorry. Hello? This is a tough one, Mr. Barton. I won't have that information until tonight or tomorrow. No, I know. So I'll let you have it tonight, with any luck. I'll be in touch with you. Okay. Look, I still don't understand what you want. I want you to help me to persuade one of your clients, Miss Harrison. Julie Harrison? That's right. I was at her office, but apparently she's gone on vacation. The typist referred me to you as her lawyer. You see, we are convinced that Mary Harrison, her sister, is the one who actually stole the Maharaja's diamond, Mr. Barton. Really? Yes, really. We have no doubts about it. Well, wouldn't that be rather a big job for a woman? Oh, well, we know she didn't pull it off alone. Her husband, a man called Craig, was part of the gang. Maybe he was the boss and convinced his wife to steal the diamond. And in fact, Mary kept it for herself. And that's what we think. Her husband is a patsy. But now she's in trouble. Maybe she'll contact her sister. And how exactly do I fit into the picture? We want that million dollars back. And we're not interested in having to call the police. I see. A million dollars and no police. So you'd like me to convince uh, my client, to convince her sister? To return the jewel. Hmm. hmm. I'll talk to Miss Harrison. Leave your address with my secretary. That's very kind of you, sir. Much obliged. Goodbye. Here you are, mister. This is the volume you wanted, the latest one. Uh, we uh, shut in half an hour. Thanks. I'll be through. Hmm. Now, let's go through the facts again, Sergeant. We've got an American gangster who's searching for something. But we don't know what it is. And into that, we've got a girl who should know and says she doesn't. And then there's Barton. The so-called brilliant lawyer. Van Duren, is that lucky we enjoy solving riddles? Yes, sir. Sergeant Barron wrote in his report a red daff was parked outside the house. It's a pity. He never took down the number. It could have given us a lead. And there's no sense even looking for the car now. There must be half a million of that model and color running around in Holland. Besides the fact, of course, that it's probably been taken off the street. Why not question Miss Harrison? Because she won't cooperate, Sergeant. It's just a waste of time. Any other ideas? Uh, what about the telephone tap we put in, sir? Oh, I think we can suspend that. I know our friend Barton. He's too clever to be indiscreet. However, keep a tail on them. Did you check the files? There's nothing in the archives, so we sent a telex to Interpol and the FBI. That's all, then. You can go, Van Duren. Yes, sir.
Oh, Van Duren? I'm out of cigars. Send somebody out to get me a new box, would you? Yes, sir. Look, you need to get some sleep. You can't sit by the telephone all day. How do you know she's going to call? Come to think of it, how does she know you've moved? You sure she's got this number? Oh, yes, yes. I left it in the office for her. I have a feeling that she will call. I want to wait. All right, Julie. After last night, I don't really like to leave you alone. But I have to go to the airport to meet Marla You now. go ahead. I promise to leave the moment it gets dark, even if Mary hasn't called. I'll go to your house. Will that please you? Huh. You nearly forgot. Attention, please. Last call for the flight B O A C three five one. Oh, yes, Tony. Yes, Mary did call. Oh, I feel much better. It seems no one's following her at the moment. Hey, Marlo. Oh, there you go. I'll be right with you. All right. Oh, sorry about that. How are you? Oh, fine, fine. The uh, local town's pretty good, too. Huh? Mm, the best. I left the car in the parking lot. If you can drag it up away. He's broken me up into so many corporations that the tax people don't know where to begin. Bloody financial genius. I don't know how he does it. Just a matter of being faithful to one's own instincts. Well, whatever it is, they ought to package it and sell it at Harrods. You know, without Marlowe, I'd never have got into racing. Tony always exaggerates, my dear. Although I must say his description of you was a miserable failure. I'm glad I could see with my own eyes. <laughs> don't fall for it, Julie. There's no lech like an old lech. <laughs> well, even if that's true. Thank you for the compliment. Are you from New York? Well, yes, I was born there and I've lived there many years, but I'm uh, not really what you call a, a citizen of the world. You see, I have many businesses. For example, when in Amsterdam, I like to dabble in the precious stone market, a diamond gem. Hmm, sounds like an interesting life. <laughs> yeah. Sorry I'm late, Julie. I had to get rid of a police tail. It's kind of amusing. Oh, I guess it won't be when they expel me from the bar. Ah, uh, if they do, it will be my fault. Not really. I'll tell you a little secret. I have the soul of a criminal. <laughs> Nobody ever discovered it, not even my father. He insisted on my becoming a lawyer. Ah, uh, I wanted to talk to you because well, Mary called me yesterday afternoon. Did she tell you? She has the diamond? How do you know about the diamond? A man called Hunter from the Allied Insurance Company came to see me yesterday. I'll explain later. Go on. Well, she's going to send the diamond in a package to the post office at Moyden. Do you think she'll be safe once we return the damn thing? The safest place for your sister is jail. Well, anything, Dave, as long as they don't kill her. I don't think it's wise for you to go to Morton. Tony offered to go in my place. All I have to do is give him written authorization. Good for Tony. Was he with you when Mary called? No, why? Listen, just curious. You want something to drink? You thirsty? Yes, thank you. Dave, don't tell me you're jealous of Tony. I've known Tony for years. He's always been lucky with women. <laughs> 
old one you're just romanticizing. But, as you can see, I know how to lose. Ah, but you haven't <laughs> lost yet. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Del. Well, well, Sergeant Van Duren. Tell me, Del. What are you doing in London? Uh, that's my business. You mean Mr. Dave Barton's business, right? I'm not going to answer that, Sergeant. First, because, as I said, it's my business. And second, because you've got no authority here. See you. You will. to our plan, Julie? Yes, it's fine with him. But I really shouldn't let you do it. Look, I can take care of myself. It's just a matter of driving to Moyton, that's all. But it'll be dangerous, and I don't want anything to happen to you. But it's not dangerous at all. Don't worry. What about those gangsters? What if they follow you? I hope they don't. But if they do, I'll be racing here tomorrow in any case. So I won't go straight to Moyton, but come through Zanford. They won't be suspicious at all. <laughs> Let's go and have a coffee now. Ah, it's about time you got here. What's going on? Not a lot. I got the boys watching Tony Shane's house. Well, that's all right, as long as he makes the next move. Is the broad with him? She's there. They're pretty tight, the two of them. Just wait, huh? I don't like waiting. What if this lawyer finds out you were fired by Allied Insurance? Then we'd really be up a creek. Hmm. Well, if my hunch is right, Barton's no more interested in the cops than we are. No, it's nothing to do with our business. That's right. Marlowe, don't worry. I have to make a short trip to Moyton. I'll see you at Sanford. Good night. Be on time for me. Of course I'll be on time. Marlo watches over you like an old mother hen. It's good. It's very, very good. Really, it's got it. Exactly what I wanted to know. It's marvelous. You've got to admit my methods are rather unorthodox, but they work. You know, this is excellent work. Really. You did a very good job. Thank you. That's Thanks. yours. See you, Mr. Barton.
Hello. Hi, Dave. Julie, listen carefully. Is Tony with you? No, Tony isn't here. He left a few minutes ago for Morden. Now listen to me carefully, Julie. And do as I tell you. Don't let anyone in. I'm on my way right now, okay? Okay, Dave. I'll wait here for you. Yes, I'll be careful, I promise. Out, Miss Harrison? See, I was right to worry. The race begins in another two hours, and there's still no sign of him. I should have insisted he stay here today. He'll make it on time. Should be here any minute now. Lou, wave him by. They fell for it. Indian warrior, they fell okay. Hmm? 
Oh, I'll get you some ice. Oh, no. No, really. A good scotch is better without ice. That ain't Tony Shane. Why, what the? They tricked us. Not for long. Roger three on out. Go ahead. Both cars are off the road. Two bodies. We need a tow truck and an ambulance. I was worried. Come here. <gasps> what the hell is this? What's the matter? He double crossed us. Take a look. Oh, this wouldn't cut a sheet of plastic, never mind glass. Fake, all right. Lying bitch. Oh. Oh. How could I have known? No, no. Come on, you scheming oh. little whore. Where's the real one? I'm going to see Miss Harris and call Inspector Wrinkle and tell him to meet me at Tony's house. And tell him it's urgent. Now, are you going to tell us what it is? Hold it, Tony. You kill her like that. They'll never find out where it is. The hunter gang are right behind me at Boyton. They could get here any second. Listen, Bert's out there watching the street, kid. He'll be able to warn us the second anybody tries to come near us. Yeah? Well, that depends on who the head it is. You know, Barton knew where I was going. And all he has to do is put two and two together. You've already let yourself be conned by your little wife, Mary. Don't let her sister get you, too. She really took you for a sucker. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Figure it out for yourself. <laughs> Look, what's so funny? You're not as smart as you like to think. After all that planning, all you've got is a glass imitation. That's the second time you've let that stone slip through your fingers. I should have known better. You're an idiot with the brain of an ant. She knows she's got to talk and fast or she'll be finished. <coughs> Thank you. 
Miss Bert, go take a look down the street. I can't see anything suspicious. I better run down and check. Listen, I have nothing against you, my dear. Just tell me where that diamond is, and you'll go free, I swear. When I give my word, I keep it. Okay? I don't know. I don't know anything. Listen, you better tell me before Tony comes back, because even if you talk, I know he plans to kill you. That man hates you, my dear, because you remind him in every way of your sister Mary. Bert! Bert! Right there, mister. Well, well. The little man who used to sell insurance. I'm sure we can reach an agreement. Why not put away the gun? A bullet in your stomach's the only agreement I'll make with you, and nothing else. I got to admit, you really pulled a smart job on the highway. Yes, sir. Now, come on, Marlowe. What happened to the diamond? Where is it? It's on the floor. You know what you can do with that thing? It's made out of glass. There's no value at all. It's not even crystal. All right, huh? Then I don't need you any longer. So long, Marlo. Uh, uh, oh. I'm getting nervous, Miss Harrison, so be careful. Roger Control, heading towards Route 10 now, over and out. Jimmy Marlowe, an old friend of the FBI. Well, it's obvious whoever killed him has also kidnapped our Miss Harrison. Is there anything I can do to help? The offer's a little late. If you told us what you knew before, we might have had a good chance to avoid this situation. Professional ethics, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, yes. Professional ethics. Yes? Who's speaking? Wrinkle. Red blocks are in, sir. And the airport? Yes, sir. Very good. Carry on. I think our red blocks will do the trick, you know. I'm really sorry now I couldn't get here sooner. Well, there's no point in worrying. Everybody makes mistakes. Even we policemen. Yes, my dear. There's no way out. <laughs> well, well, what do you know? A real live little monkey. No, no, she got me.
<laughs> if you find any bananas up there, let me know. Well, Barton, the ones we found on the road are American too. And the FBI tells us that Mr. Shane is really an ugly customer. Three years ago, he was deported from America. We were all friends. We played in the same football team together. We hadn't been in contact for years, and I didn't. Yes? Come on, let's have a little fun together. <laughs> Relax and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been thinking, if you and me got together, we could go 50-50 on everything, huh? <laughs> All right, I'm through playing around. Now, come on, tell me. Where's your sister? But you can't kill me. I'm the only one who can get the diamond from Mary. Who said anything about killing you? I brought you here to make a deal with you. But that takes me to your trust. So first, you got to get to know me a little better. How about it, baby? You okay? Don't shoot. Now, wait a minute, huh? No, I haven't got it. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I can help you. I know where to find it. I know where Mary is. No. No.
You bitch, come here! Calling Inspector Wrinkle, car 41. Go ahead, 41. Founder, sir. Harrison. Yes, sir. How about Shane? He's dead. All right, bring her in. Glad you found her alive. Is that really the best you can do? Glad you found her alive. Well, what else can I say? Come on, Barton. Your interest in Miss Harrison is not just professional. This is car 41 to Central. We're bringing the Harrison girl in now. Car 3 is requested an ambulance. I hate to bother you now, Miss Harrison, but I really have to ask you a few questions, to put us in the picture at least. Be calm, Julie. Don't. I quite understand how you feel, Miss Harrison, but there are certain things that we must know. Would you please explain exactly how you fit into this incredible story? All this happened because they took me for my sister. She's really Mary Harrison, the sister, is that right, sir? Yes, Julie died two years ago. Thank you. Uh, miss, your cigarettes. Oh, thank you. You. Would you? Thank you, Dave. How long have uh, you known? Almost from the beginning. I felt you weren't telling me the truth, so I made my own investigation. First, I found out that it was your old nurse who made those calls from London, and that it was she who sent that package to Moyton. The thing I don't understand is why you chose me for your lawyer. I knew you were a friend of Tony's. So you thought I might be useful? Well, I checked into him too and found out all about your marriage and the divorce. The incredible thing is he obviously didn't realize you were his ex-wife. He believed you were Julie. How did you ever fool Tony? Actually, you mean physically, don't you? Well, he's always been a bit of a chump. May I ask rather a confidential question? Why I didn't arrest Mary Harrison? I'll answer that. Anyone who even unwittingly helps the police should be given a medal. Now, I have to admit that I don't know whether she collaborated with us unwittingly. 
whether our Miss Harrison knew exactly what she was doing all along. The point is, Sergeant, she managed to entice a band of American crooks to eliminate each other. And besides, there's no proof against her. May I? You can't smoke. We're taking off. I'm not going to smoke. I think it's better if I keep it. It's safe. For us. How about the stones, then? It's a piece of glass. Oh, a good imitation, of course. The real stone is in a safe deposit in London. The Maharaja, you see, keeps it there all the time. You know, this is the first time I've seen a million-dollar diamond in a pack of cigarettes. 